Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We get a lot of customers sending us pictures of rusted out old Mustangs asking if the car is worth saving. Where the car is savable really is subjective. It really depends on your budget, your skill level, plus if the car is unique or not. A car that has a unique history or is rare and desirable definitely is a much better candidate for fixing up and putting some money into. One of our longtime sales guys recently picked up this 91 coupe behind me. This car is rough, but it has a lot going for it. Originally, it's a 5 liter 5 speed notch, which makes it desirable in its own right. But best of all, it's an SSP car. SSP stands for Special Service Package, meaning at one point in time, this car is most likely used for police service. Well, the owner of the car does plan on doing a lot of the work himself, but one area that needs help is the cross member. The cross member is a weldable part, and a lot of people have asked how to install this, so today we're going to show you how using this 91 notchback. More and more restoration sheet metal parts are becoming available for the Fox Body Mustangs. You can get complete floor pans and also this front floor cross member, also known as a seat platform. This is a commonly damaged part. This will feature 1983 through 1993 Fox Body Mustangs. What typically happens is the seat actually rips these studs out of the floor, making it impossible to bolt your seat down properly. If it gets too bad, you have to replace it, and today we're going to show you how. This is typical of the cross member failure. When this car is not even safe to drive, the seat literally pulls out of the floor when you push down on it. The first step in the installation is going to be remove the seats, carpet, console, so we can get to the actual cross member itself. We'll start with the seats. Now we'll slide the seat back and release the front nuts. Our front seat nuts actually still have the original coverage, which are hard to find. Do it there, just grab a little screwdriver, push on that clip, pop them off. Now we'll tilt the seat forward, lift it up. You want to make sure there's no wires underneath. If you have a lumbar car, there could be wires there. In case of ours, we know there's nothing there. We'll move the seat. We'll take this seat out. We're going to move both the seat belt sides, our door sill plates, our kick panels, and our rear trim panels. Next, we'll remove the door sill plate, which is going to be held in by four screws. In case of ours, it has one left. These are all excellent parts to consider replacing while you have it out. Now we're going to remove the kick panel, which normally would have a push pin here that somebody would remove for us. Once that's out, simply pull out and pull down on it to release and remove. Now you want to repeat the process on the driver's side, then we'll move on to removing the back seat. Now we're going to remove the back seat, stick your hand between the two cushions, get a grip on the bottom, and simply pull up and out. To make it easier to remove the carpet, remove the bottom screw from the trim panel. That'll separate the two. The other side is riveted, so there's no reason to mess with that. That gives you more room though to get underneath the carpet and pull it out. Now we're going to move the console storage bin. You can pop off these little caps here and move the nut inside. Do the same thing on the other side and release the storage bin. Now remove the rear screws for the console top plate. Remove the shift boots, lift on the inside, pop the clips free. Now remove the additional two screws in the front here to remove the top plate. To remove the rest of the console, there's two screws down here, which in our case we're already missing. You want to pop the glove box open, squeeze it together, there's two more up here.
This side's the same way. There's two screws on the side and two screws at the top. The side you can reach easily. The top, you gotta remove this kick panel or knee panel to get to the screws. Now we can pull it away from the dash a little bit, reach back and disconnect the stereo. We're gonna remove the radio to make it easier. They do make these tools you can pick up pretty much any stereo store, it makes it easier to remove a factory radio. Most of you probably don't have a factory radio anymore, in which case it's just four screws and the radio's gonna come out. We removed our shifter handle. At this point, you can lift the console out, lift it out. In our case, we have an aftermarket shifter. It's got a very tall stud rush. Not sure what kind of shifter this is. It's gonna make it a little bit tighter. With a stock shifter or most aftermarkets, it'll come out pretty easily. The last thing we need to remove before we can install our new carpet is a bracket back here for the console. Now you can remove the carpet. Best thing to do is sort of fold it towards the center of the car. With the carpet out, it's easy to see the issue with ours. I mean, our stud's supposed to be right in this neighborhood here. This whole layer is completely torn out. There are ways to patch it, but replacing it's your best bet. Before we can remove this panel, we'll start getting the wires out of the way. Remove both these screws for the bracket and the ground. To remove the factory crossmember, we gotta drill out all the factory spot welds. To do that though, we have to find them first. So all the sound deadening that's over them has to be removed so you can see the panel all the way across. Drilling out the spot welds is a long and tedious process. We're not gonna show you every one of them. We're gonna show you the concept so you know how to do it. What you want to do first is find the spot weld. Most of them are pretty easy to see. If not, then you may have to take a little bit of paint off to be able to find them. Once you do that, you're going to find a piece of punch. Take your punch, punch the center of the spot weld. We're going to drill a small eighth inch pilot hole. Then we're going to use a spot weld cutter to remove it. Here's a close up of the spot weld bit that we actually carry here at CJ Pony Parts. It's made by Eastwood. It actually is double sided, so you can use it and then flip it over and you have another drill bit on the other side. The drill bit ends here are replaceable and includes a pilot that actually goes in. So once you drill the pilot hole, this will center the bit, making it easier to drill out your spot welds. There's three located right here. There's one, two, this one to remove the paint to make it easier to see is your third one down here. We're gonna start with this one so you can see the process. Again, work your way around the entire outside lip, removing all the spot welds, and this panel will come right off. With a spot weld cutter, I'm gonna suggest using a corded drill. You can do it with a cordless if it has a good battery, but you're gonna burn through batteries pretty fast. A cordless will make it more consistent and make the job faster. You'll know when you get it free, because it'll actually, the metal will pop up a little bit. You can see now we have some play there. Move on to the next spot weld. Once you get all the spot welds drilled out, it will still be held in place. What you want to do is grab a hammer, some sort of a chisel, flathead screwdriver, and just start hammering it loose. Now I'll grab a little bit of a bigger pry bar.
and remove it. Now we have the original panel off, we're ready to begin the installation of the new one. You might notice we actually did some floor repair while we had the interior out of this car. To install the new cross member, the first thing you want to do is anytime you drill through the floor, you want to weld those holes shut. Then we'll go through, grind them down, and grind down any remaining pieces from the original spot welds. I'm going to use a ripper, but your grinder you were just using will work fine as well. What we're going to do now is go over the section, anywhere we're going to be welding, we want to remove the paint to get a nice clean metal surface. Once the metal's all cleaned up down to the bare metal, we're ready to spray some weld through primer. You don't want to use a normal primer because you won't be able to weld to it. Get some good Eastwood weld through primer. We're going to spray it over all the bare metal to protect it. Then we can start fitting our new cross member. Okay, now we can put the cross member into place and get an idea where everything's going to go. See how well it lines up. Probably have to press down in the middle. Make sure it's gonna sit flat. I'm just gonna put two small marks on either side of the back line. There's two ways you can do this at this point. You can measure from the back bolt hole to the front bolt hole, or better yet, put the seat in the car, make sure it lines up before we put our final marks in, begin to prepare to weld. I ended up putting both seats in just to make sure everything was where it needed to be, especially since we did some, we did some floor repairs on the rear of this car as well. Now that we know everything's in the right place, we'll pull the seats back out. We have the cross member marked, we can get ready to start welding it in. We're gonna be spot welding our new cross member in the same way the factory did with theirs. What you wanna do is grab your factory cross member you hold it in front if you want or put it on top. Either way, get it lined up just roughly where it's going to be. And then we're going to mark our new cross member where the factory holes are. That way when we're actually drilling the holes, we're welding, it's the same place the factory welds were. Once all the holes are marked, now we can start drilling them. You want to drill them out to 3 8 of an inch. I'm going to use a uni bit, which works fine, or you can use a standard 3 8 drill bit. The 3 8 drill bit, you may want to drill pilot holes to make it easier, depending on what kind of drill you're using. Once you have the holes drilled, you want to deburr and kind of clean up the area around these holes, take the paint off, do the same on the top so we can weld. Once the holes are drilled and the paint's removed, on the bottom we're just going to touch the surface of our floor all the empty areas here, again, grab your weld through primer. I'm going to spray it before we put it on. Now we're ready to start actually welding it into place. What you want to do is you can get some help because you want to hold down the center, start in the center, and work your way outward. What you want to do is put the tip in the welder kind of in the center of the opening, sort of do little circles to fill it in to complete the weld. If you have a couple lips that are sticking up too high, you want to grab a hammer, just push them down, make it easier to get the welds to penetrate. Once we're finished welding all the spot welds in the place, we're going to go in with some primer to make sure there's no rust in the future. The 
The last step for the installation of the cross members to install the studs for our seat track. They won't thread all the way in. So basically get them started, make sure they're straight. Get a few turns out of it. We'll grab a vice grip and tighten it down. Get them nice and tight, repeat the process for the other three studs and your installation is finished. That's the basics of how to replace the front cross member on your Fox body Mustang. Since the cross member is structural to the seat of the car, if you do damage yours, you do want to replace it because it is a safety issue when driving. This is not a first timer installation, but if you're looking to learn to work on your car and get into welding, it's a good place to start since the welds really are invisible once the installation is finished. If you haven't done it before, give yourself the better part of a weekend since you do have to remove the entire interior, repair the panel and reinstall it. It's going to take some time, but take your time, replace any worn parts while you have it apart and you'll be back on the road in no time. Thank <laughs> you.